Hello everyone and welcome. I'm at the Auto Club Raceway in Pomona, California. And in this video, we're gonna be checking out the Gum Out Top Fuel Dragster. I've been invited by Gum Out, an NHRA sponsor and scientific leader in fuel additives, to explore how these cars can produce 7,000 horsepower. These cars run 500 cubic inch V8 engines that are rebuilt after just a thousand feet of travel. Now obviously this is quite a bit different than your road car, which is why Gum Out invests in understanding what is helpful and harmful to best take care of an engine. These cars easily exceed 300 miles per hour and reach 100 miles per hour in under 9 tenths of a second. The engine is supercharged, reaching an absolute manifold pressure of about 60 psi by the end of the run. The engines rev to approximately 8600 rpm and have a compression ratio of about 6.7 to 1. It also has no dedicated cooling system. The engines are rebuilt after every run. Pistons, connecting rods, and crankshafts last a maximum of about 10 runs. The camshafts and valves don't have a set frequency of being replaced, but they're inspected after every run. The clutch is replaced after every run, and it does occasionally weld together when it does lock up. The supercharger is freshened after every four runs, but it can potentially last for many runs and is the longest lasting rotating component of the engine. The discarded parts are either scrapped or given to fans as souvenirs. For a single run, including the burnout, backing up to the starting line, and the quarter mile pass, the car uses 13 to 14 gallons of fuel. That's right, we're no longer talking miles per gallon, we're talking 16 to 20 gallons per mile. So just how does this engine produce 7,000 horsepower? And I'm going to make a comparison here so it's something we can all be a little bit more familiar with. And so I'm going to compare it to a naturally aspirated gasoline engine and see how it stacks up and see if it makes sense that this engine could produce 7,000 horsepower. So the first change between this engine and the engine in your car, should you have a naturally aspirated gasoline powered car, is that this is using nitromethane. And actually the regulations for NHRA top fuel cars is that they can only use up to 90% uh, nitromethane and then the rest is alcohol. But for the purposes of this video, we're just going to be assuming 100% nitromethane. Now one of the key differences between nitromethane and gasoline is its energy density. So nitromethane has an energy density of 11.3 megajoules per kilogram, whereas gasoline has an energy density of 44 megajoules per kilogram. So as you can see, gasoline is quite a bit more energy dense, about four times as much energy in the same amount of mass of gasoline versus nitro. Now another critical difference between nitro and gasoline is the air fuel ratio. So nitro has an absurdly low air fuel ratio of 1.7 to 1 and part of the reason for that is it contains oxygen within the fuel itself whereas gasoline does not has a much higher air fuel ratio of 14.7 to 1. This means that with the same amount of air you can burn 8.6 times as much nitromethane rather than gasoline which is very impressive for nitromethane especially when you're going for power creation in which having this very low air fuel ratio is very helpful. So let's do a little math with what we've learned so far and find out just how much more power we can create with nitromethane with the same volume, with the same displacement engine uh, versus gasoline. So if we take 11.3 megajoules per kilogram divided by 44, that tells us our energy density. And if we multiply that by 14.7 divided by 1.7, that's how much more fuel we can burn. You'll find that with nitro, you can produce about 2.22 times the amount of power as gasoline with the same displacement engine, but at the expense of using 8.6 times the amount of fuel. Okay, now let's move on to the manifold absolute pressure. So these dragster cars can run up to about 60 PSI manifold absolute pressure, uh, and this is towards the end of the run. And so this is if we were to compare this to a naturally aspirated gasoline engine running at 100% volumetric efficiency, that'd be pulling in about 14.7 PSI. So if we take 60 divided by 14.7, 4.08 times the amount of air going into this because it is supercharged. So moving on to displacement, uh, the maximum allowable size for these engines is 500 cubic inches. This is about 8.19 liters. So what we're gonna do now is combine what we've learned from four, five, and six, and find out the size of a naturally aspirated gasoline engine that would be equivalent to this 500 cubic inch supercharged nitromethane engine. So we're producing 2.22 times the amount of power, we're burning 4.08 times the amount of air, 
and this is in a 8.19 liter engine. So when we multiply all these together, we get the equivalent of a 74.18 liter engine. This is a massive uh, engine when you kind of compare it to a naturally aspirated gasoline engine. So does it make sense that a 74 liter engine could produce 7,000 horsepower? Well, let's just look at its specific output. So 7,000 horsepower divided by 74.18, and that gives us a specific output of an equivalent specific output of 94.36 horsepower per liter if this was a naturally aspirated 74 liter gasoline engine. Well, does that number make sense? Actually, yeah, it's a very reasonable number. Uh, if you were to look at an economy car, such as like a Toyota Corolla, that's gonna be around 73 horsepower per liter. If you were to look at more a sports oriented, you know, a supercar performance like the Ferrari 458, that's producing around 125 horsepower per liter. Remember, both of those being naturally aspirated so it's completely reasonable to assume it could produce 94 horsepower per liter and the figure of 7,000 horsepower is a reasonable number to assume. So the math checks out. These engines really can produce that much power. It's pretty insane to think uh, out of an 8 liter engine you're getting that much power. But yes, it can indeed do it. The math checks out. So feel free to check out the links in the video description. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave those below. Thanks for watching.